Hello there. My name is Aaron Smiley, and I'll be taking you on a whirlwind tour of assembly and getting you up and running, ready to tackle any creative challenge in the world of vector art. What is Assembly App? Well, it's the premier art and design app on your app store. Create logos, icons, illustrations, and more using Assembly's powerful, easy to use features only found in professional desktop software. Today we will be focusing on grouping objects, nesting groups, which is groups inside groups, ungrouping, and an introduction to strokes, and designing your first character. Since learning these basics, I've gone on to create hundreds of assembly projects. This is the art we'll be building today. It's worth noting that right from the start, I'm using the iPad version. I actually normally use the mobile version, but I'm just using the iPad version because it's easier to record this tutorial. They are exactly the same. Let's open up assembly. First of all, select a circle in the basic shapes. Increase its size, then duplicate it and change the color of our second circle. And by simply using the square handles along the dotted edge, squeeze the left and right side. We want to turn this simple circle into a sphere. You will only need two colours for this. Repeat this two more times, gradually getting thinner, and you'll end up with a 3D beach ball. They will all need to be aligned to the centre of the original circle. Now let's add some shadow to the bottom. Let's go back to our shapes and move along to the design elements. Let's grab this moon shape and rotate it all the way around so that the points are facing up. If you have a magnet tool switched on, you'll see and feel it snap into place. You can turn this on and off by tapping the magnet icon above the canvas. Let's decrease the opacity. Select all by holding down and dragging over the shapes. Tap on the group icon. Let's duplicate that and place it in the corner. We will be using this asset for multiple elements of our robot. Now let's give his body a head. I think it would be really cool if his head popped out of his spherical body. Let's select a circle and make it darker and place it at the top. I'm going to nudge this into position and increase its size. We're going to start the head by getting another circle, changing its color and rescaling. Now the head is going to need to be a little smaller. I think we should roughly end up being around this size. Let's decrease its size for now. Let's start with its eyes. Let's make two of them. For this one, really simple, just create a series of circles. Change that color to whatever you like it to be and place them inside one another. If you're designing a more complicated eye, it's easier to create just one and then duplicate it and flip it round to the other side. Let's add some shade on the side of the head and in the same way as we created the beach ball, squeeze the sides down. We want the lightest area of this head to be in the center, so let's make sure these sides are darker. Let's make a small chin by duplicating the shape and making it smaller and placing it at the bottom. I'm pretty much making this character up as I go along in exactly the same way I might be when sketching out ideas. We're nearly done and it's amazing because we've only used a circle shape so far. Now let's get the magnet shape and place this on the sides of the head. Fantastic. Let's duplicate that and place it on the other side. Grab this pill shape we are going to create a ridge at the top of his head by adding a stroke and changing the colour. You can make this feel like it's part of the body. Now, then all we need to do is simply find a small rectangle, rotate it round and we have ourselves a mouth. Let's go back to the eyes and make them a little wider. The wider the eyes, the cuter this guy is going to look. That looks about right. 
Let's just duplicate that eye across. That looks a bit wonky, but we'll fix it in a second. Quickly select all the head and duplicate. Now merge this into a single shape. 90% of the time, I use the shadow functionality to create my shadows. But this is another way I sometimes create them. I sometimes use this so I can stretch the shadow in different ways or cut bits out. Let's make this smaller, move the body back to the center. I think I really need to sort that eye out now. You can simply group and ungroup your objects to quickly edit. Let's move our head into position, adjust each element until you feel it's working for you. The head's slightly bigger than I thought it was going to be, but that's pretty good. We have a head and a body, now this dude needs some arms. Let's create a hole where the arms will pop out from. Let's duplicate the circle and scale it down. Uh, squash the sides to make them feel like it's coming from the side of our sphere. We will have one on either side, but let's just focus on this one. Now, let's go and grab a stroke. You can easily increase and decrease the thickness of your line. I've also changed the end from flat to curved to make this feel more friendly. This is where we can use this shape again. Let's duplicate it. What's really great about strokes are is that if you were to say multiply bits and then you want to use them as fingers, you can change the size of the line and the thickness will remain the same. So taking our first stroke and duplicating it, rotating and rescaling to make three simple fingers. And then you can group those and put them into place. Once you've finished that group, the scale and the thickness will remain relative to each other, which is kind of cool as well. Now let's place the arm on the body. I like to constantly play with the color and see what works. You can't really make any mistakes in assembly because you can just go back and undo the last previous action. Gradually adjust each element until it feels right. We'll just go inside the group and change these colors until you feel it's working. That's much better. Let's group these elements again, duplicate it and flip it round and add it to the other side. Okay. This is where we can use the shape again. Let's create some spheres for legs. Maybe he rolls around everywhere. There are no rules to this. The most important thing is to play and have fun. Let's make these spheres feel like they're wrapping around the bottom of his body. Duplicate, shrink, and then place them behind one another. That way, they'll look like they're wrapping around all the way along the bottom. The further back, the smaller they look. Now, if it only rolls around, what happens when he reaches the set of stairs? Let's add a giant spring at the bottom of his body. Just move this a bit more. Right, let's start our spring. Let's start our spring by selecting this stroke and rotating. You'll notice my strokes come in really thick. That's because I'm zoomed into my canvas. Yours should look more like this when you bring them in. Now, let's take this stroke, duplicate it and change its color. We want these lines to twirl around each other. Now we're gonna do something a little funky here. Simply duplicate, intersect and split this shape. Place this bit on the original shape and then delete the rest. Now, let's group this and place it at the bottom. Now it looks like the strokes are whirling around each other. Now let's put this at the bottom of our robot. I think we've now given our robot some real character. At the bottom, our spring looks a bit strange. I think we should add a floor. This way, um, it will quickly hide the imperfections of my spring at the bottom. I always like 
to think up stories about these robots and they usually only make sense when the robot is complete. Let's create a hatch to illustrate how the robot's head pops out of its body. Duplicate this circle and place it above his head. Let's add some bolts that wouldn't look out of place on a submarine. I'm really starting to get a sense of what this character is about. Maybe he's like an old World War II mine that sits dormant until someone or something comes near and then he springs into action. Let's call this guy Jack in the Bot. Let's shrink his name and place it into position. Let's go into the main body and darken this shadow. That's much better. I really like those bolts. Let's give him some running along his arms. Each element is grouped in such a way that you can easily go back and edit it, delete and replace. Once you've finished, go back and group. There are two main ways to edit your groups. One is to open it and the other is to double tap. Once you're inside, you can edit those elements that are in that group. Now, delete the extra sphere. We now want to create three versions of our robot. Group and shrink him. Then duplicate him two more times. Now we can ungroup each object and delete the nested groups inside. We want to illustrate how our robot might spring into action. For example, ungroup our middle one and delete our spring. Place him at the bottom and bring him to the front. Now let's move on to the left one. Delete the spring, head and move the hatch into place. Simply add a few lines where the hands used to be to make it look like an old mine. Because of the way we've built this, we're now simply removing groups and placing our robot into its sedentary position. We really hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial and we'd like to make loads more, but if there's something in particular that you want us to go through, then please tell us and we'll make a video for you. I'd love to see what you come up with. Please share it with us either inside the gallery app or on Instagram. Thanks very much. See you in the next tutorial.